Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the kitchen at the cafe in Briarcliff Village. We are returning to the kitchen for a new menu item for them. It is barbecue, award-winning barbecue. We're going to begin by chatting with the restaurant tours, Joe and Judy Raitley. Thank you for inviting me into your kitchen again. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. All right, just for those of us who don't know that this all began with dog biscuits that <laughs> refreshed a doggy's breath. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Greenies. That's also correct. And how did Greenies happen? A review. A quick review. Okay. We had a dog that had very horrible breath. Sad. He's an outside dog, but he literally could make it that you didn't want to be outside with him. Okay. Judy Great kept, outdoors wasn't enough. No. Okay. Judy kept asking me that I had to do something. I had worked for USDA and Tennessee Valley Authority in research for a number of years, and she thought I could solve any problem. That's right. So he did? Yes. You did. Okay. Sooner or later, I came up with something the dog liked it, kept giving it to her, and probably 10 days later, Judy goes, you know how much better Ivan's breath is? And I go, no. <laughs> Poor Ivan. Yeah. Poor me. <laughs> and poor you. And poor you. And so it was probably 75-80% cleaned up. We turned that into Greenies brand, the Pet Treats. And that was in 1996 when we started. We sold our first product in 98. And we sold the company to Mars, the candy company, which is also the largest dog food treat company in the world. We think of it as candy bars, but we know it's Candy bars dogs. for dogs. For dogs. Okay. And, yes. and okay. we were the largest pet treat company in the U.S. when we sold. Good for you. So, so, went from USDA to entrep uh, a life of an entrepreneur. How did you get to the cafe? Well, the cafe is just another investment in our that, portfolio. Okay. Uh, so, we're up here in Barclay Village, beautiful as it is, it just is north of downtown a bit. And we also have a company that is a barbecue company called Asa Hearts Barbecue. Mm -hmm. And we sell smokers. Uh, Barbecue sauce, lump rubs. charcoal, uh, rubs, like rubs and seasonings, rubs. and we have really nine-time world champion chef, competitive chef, Chris Mark leads the company. He's won the American Royal eight times. There's only one other person that's won it more than once. That guy's won it twice. Chris has won it eight times. Eight. Plus, he's won the Jack Daniels, which is the other kind of world championship event. Okay, so it made sense. You have barbecue supply right. and product company mm -hmm. to introduce that as a line here at the cafe. Right. Well, what? Chef Thomas really, really wanted to do this. You're our executive chef here. Yes. He wanted to do this, so we're putting it all together. Right. And right. it's so Kansas City. Oh, yes. It's the barbecue, barbecue capital of the world. And if people don't know that, we rem I remind them all the time. Oh, we certainly should I, do that. And we yeah. certainly should do that. So, you're, you've introduced some, it's here right now at the oh, cafe. Yes. yes. Your full line of burnt ends and brisket and, and oh those ribs. Oh those ribs and the chicken. Killers. The chicken is to die for. The chicken is oh. to die for. Okay, well I think that we need to talk to some chefs now. Your I, executive chef. Yes. And also your barbecue chef. Right. Yes. Thank you once again. After this, we're gonna go into the kitchen and cook. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you. We continue our chat with the chef here at the Cafe in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef, Thomas Belil. Thomas, thank you for inviting me back into your kitchen again. Well, thank you for accepting again. <laughs> okay. Well, it's always such a hardship eating your food, but... All right, so we've got a new line of food, but I thought we'd talk a little bit about what also is available here at the cafe and your journey here. Let's begin with your journey. Okay. You were on a train. I was. You were on a train. You're my first chef who cooked on a train. At least you're in a stationary kitchen now, and it's not moving around. So you came here. What was your goal? What was your inspiration for the cafe? Well, honestly, my inspiration is the people around me. I, I want my customers to want to come back, mm -hmm. to be a part of the atmosphere that is the cafe. And this definitely has a family feel to it. You have inside dining, outside dining, which is great. So much, you know, a, a quality of time during the year, quantity of time during the year. Okay, so when did you decide you wanted to have barbecue on the menu? 
Well, af after Joe and Judy and I decided that this would be a good fit, I got to meet the Marx fellas. They you didn't are, say brothers, and so we know who we're talking well, about. Well, they could be. They this could. looks pretty young. Okay. <laughs> They run Ace of Hearts Barbecue, mm -hmm. and that's also a company of Joe and Judy's. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like kind of a natural transition. I mean, these guys are amazing. And, you know, when it comes to barbecue, they seem to know it all. And they're, they were very generous with me in teaching me some of their trade secrets and providing me. No. Oh, no. no but providing me with great equipment. We use a good one smoker called the Trail Boss. It is yes. just, it's the best. Yes. And so, I mean, having these guys as a reference at any point has been just, it's been great. Okay, so Kansas City Barbecue, that part made some sense. Let's bring it north of the river. And you have expanded then your skills as well with equipment, technique, seasoning, cooking, how do you like barbecue? I love barbecue. You love barbecue. I love everything about it. And you love cooking it. Oh, it's, you know what? It's the best thing in the world when you put a big old brisket out there on the smoker at eight in the morning and you let it go all day long. And that night when you slice it, it is some of the finest food there is. Okay, well, I think that I should now go talk to your mentor, if you will, Chef Chris Marks, and then after that, we'll go in the kitchen and you all can prepare one of your signature dishes. Sounds great. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Barney. We complete our chat with the chef with the barbecue chef here at the cafe at Briarcliff Village, Chris Marks. Thank you all so for Thank inviting you very us much. into your kitchen. All right, let's talk. You, now, this is serious. This is very serious. This it's barbecue. It's Kansas City it's Kansas barbecue. It's Kansas City barbecue. You've been doing it for 20 years. How many awards have you won? We've won 43 grand championships throughout the United States. We've won the American Royal eight times and the Jack Daniels World Sauce Contest one time. And I think over 600 individual awards. So this has been a, a lifetime. And this is a lifelong pursuit for you. It is a lifelong it's pursuit. A lifelong Absolutely. Pursuit. Okay, Absolutely. so. Barbecue. You dry rub? Oh, absolutely. I have all my own dry rubs okay. and also all my own sauces. It's what we used in competition. And they were created by my family. And I made oh, the nice. sauces in recognition for my dad. My dad oh. passed away in 97. So I immediately made the sauces for him. My mother passed away in 2009. And I made all the rubs for her. So it's oh. the way I keep the fire in my belly. Yep, yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is handed down. And you are you have created these sauces, I'm assuming, from one competition to the other as you perfected. Absolutely. You we perfected, perfected it and tweaked and did this and a smidgen of that. And then we ended up with what we got here. All right, and you have a line of barbecue equipment. I mean you're very picky about oh, every absolutely. piece and part of this whole process. I am an absolute purist. I use charcoals, I use woods. And I use real pit cookers. I use a good one smoker because I can cook on it a long time. I can just set it and forget. Well, and you know that doesn't um, harm our environment in any way because we're using all natural products. Absolutely. You can taste the difference when they've done some lighter fluid, whatever, oh. stir. <laughs> just you can tell the You can absolutely tell the, you difference. Can tell the difference. And we okay. teach methods and we teach we teach the hobbyists how to do it right with our smokers. All right, I think we should go in the kitchen with your executive chef Thomas and we should do some cooking. Absolutely. Okay, why don't you come with us? We are now in the kitchen at the Cafe of Briarcliff Village. Chefs Chris and Tom are coming in from the good one smoker with the meat. Oh, what do we have here chefs? We have burnt ends, mm. brisket, and ribs. All right, I know now we're gonna cut them up, but, and while we're doing that, could you tell us how you prepared them and cooked them? The first thing we're gonna talk about is we're talking a little bit about the brisket. Okay, okay we're doing a traditional pet brisket. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a real deal with charcoals and woods. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cook a whole pack of brisket, and we're gonna take that brisket Right almost as it's done, we're going to slice that point off and make traditional burnt ends. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and 
cut up the burnt ends so Tom can drop them into the hot skillet. We're gonna sear them. We're gonna sear that great flavor in. Got a lot of fat, a lot of juices. We're gonna sear them tight. We're gonna start to draw a lot of those juices. Okay, so that's a two-step process. It's from the smoker to the cooktop. And what kind of rub did we use? How did we season this? Well, actually it was seasoned, first of all, with a coat of mustard. Then what we do is we use yellow mustard. Absolutely, yellow mustard. cheap old yellow cheap mustard. Cheap old plain old yellow. Not honey Dijon grey poupon. No, just we cheap wouldn't old think yellow of mustard. it. The, the oh, real man. deal. Okay, yellow mustard. And then what did we do? And, and then what we're going to do is I use three little pigs Memphis blend, okay. which is a great pepper type rub. We're building a real Texas brisket. Okay. So we want that crust. We want that great flavor. We got. I, I can tell we got the crust. Okay. All right, so you're cutting it. Obviously, we always remember against the grain, and you let it yes. rest for a little bit. Uh, actually, I don't let rest at all. I okay. Cut, I like to cut and serve. Uh, fresh as fresh as possible, nice and hot. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do here this is, is we're barbecue. Gonna, this is barbecue. Different approach yes. to life. All right. And what I'm going to do is we're going to do a traditional burn in. So we're going to do a chunk. Mm -hmm. So I'll cut them up in chunks. What we would expect to see on our plate, this size cubed meat, if absolutely, you will. absolutely. Oh. Now, now, what you want to see on this is you see those great, deep, dark smoke rings. Yes, that's what you get from a real pig. You're not going to get this from an electric, you're not going to get this from a pellet cooker, you're going to get it from a real pig cooker. So, you got it hot. How long was this brisket? This brisket open? cooked approximately 10 to 12 hours. Oh, this was serious. So about what temperature was it cooking We're running at? at about 225 to Low 200, and slow. 250. Low, low and, and slow. slow. And, and we're back to that movement of the slow cook movement. Absolutely. Natural and pure. The lower and slower, the more tender we're going to have and the more flavor we're going to have. It just in. intensifies the flavor, Abs doesn't it? All absolutely. Right. So all of these are going to fi finish their burnt end process by going straight to the cooktop. Do we have a little oil in there, Chef? Oh, yeah, absolutely a little oil. So are you adding seasoning at this point, or do you have... We are. We're adding Memphis blend right into right the pan. Right into the pan. Yes, okay. we're taking it right into the pan. Let it sear, and what we'll do is we'll let that go ahead and cook. And at the same time, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and prepare the brisket. This is basically... Okay, so the burnt ends are on their way, and now a brisket. Yeah, this is a brisket. This is going to be called the flat, or what they call the slicing portion of the brisket. Okay, so what we're going to do here, this is cooked identical to the other. You put mustard on it? Mustard, you absolutely. You did do mustard, and then you put on which of your seasonings? We use the uh, Memphis blend on here. You can Memphis see the darker seasoning on here. I can. That's what we're looking for. You can smell that rich flavor of that rub. All so right. what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and slice them down. I see that barbecue ring on there from the real deal. Absolutely. You see a properly cooked brisket, it's not falling apart. We want to be able to put a gentle tug on this brisket like this so it comes apart. Go ahead and try. Oh, force me. Force me. So it should be fork tender. It shouldn't be falling apart or shouldn't have to work at it too hard to pull it, snap it across. That seasoning's amazing. Yeah. What's the next piece of meat? I have to finish this. I'm so sorry. Okay, our next piece is we're going to talk about our baby back ribs. And I tell you what, baby backs are it. And you can take a great look at this rib. You can see the nice crust that's put across this. That's from the smoking process. Now, when I look at these ribs, I'll oh, look, at that. look at the back side of this. See how they're starting to break apart? I do. Notice they're not falling apart, which is overcooked. You know, you hear people falling off the bone. That is not correct. What did we put on this uh -huh. to get it ready for the grill? Uh, what we used on that is we used the Three Little Pigs Championship seasoning. Okay. And guess what? A what? little mustard. You know, I had no idea about the mustard, but I will tell you that you're using more of the dry at this point. Absolutely. Aren't you? There's two different styles of ribs. You bring up a very good point. There's what we call the Memphis dry ribs, where we use a traditional only rub, or what we call the Kansas City sticky ribs, which are basically going to be a sauced out rib. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have two traditional styles. I like them both. Okay. And I cook them both. Okay. But if you're really talking ribs across the world, Kansas City is known as sticky ribs. Okay. So people like the sticky ribs. So what, okay. what I do is I take a little honey, surprise, surprise, and a little three little pig competition barbecue sauce, and 
and I bring them across. So you've combined honey and barbecue sauce. Oh yeah, we're in Kansas City. And we're in Kansas City. Sweet, and sweet. This is yeah, we do like it sweet. Well, we're sweet, that you think? That's Absolutely. the reason, all right. Always do the front side and the back side because the first thing that our tongue hits is always gonna be that back side. A big mistake a lot of these restaurants make is they never prepare the back side like they do the front side. You've got this down to a science. Every experience that you could have with barbecue is at its optimum. I optimize. You and, optimize. And that's what we want to do here at the cafe. We want to bring that barbecue level up here to the super premium because we can do that here. We have the ability with the talents, the sauces, the and rubs. And the passion here. And absolutely got, the got passion. passion. And so. So we, Once it's off the grill, then we start adding the sauce. Absolutely. We don't put too much. We don't goop it up. We want it to be nice. We want a nice flavor profile where we're tasting the ribs, the rubs, the smoke, and the sauce, not just the goopy sauce. Mm -hmm. So you take a look at this right here, mm -hmm. and that's that look that you get. You get that nice sheen. It is. Okay? Now, how do you cut this up for serving? We cut these up for serving. We always flip them over on the back because you have to see the bone cut. So in between the bones. In between the bones. Obviously. And we'll just cut the standard baby like that. And this one's cutting really well. Oh, how okay. pretty. Look but, at the profile. You, That's got a profile that we've got. You got a does. nice bone on there. But the best thing is, is you start to see how the how the meat comes off. So let's do a bite test. Notice it's not falling off the bone. There's a test here on biting. We okay. have a bite test. So That's what's supposed to happen on a rib. It didn't fall off the bone. We gently bit into it. Okay. Oh, please. All right. Mm -hmm. See how it comes off the bone? How it is tender. The fact that it's not falling off fools you. It's extremely tender. Absolutely. That's low and slow on oh. the good one smokers. Mm -hmm. All right. I suppose we can share this with our celebrity taster when he gets here. Absolutely. The burnt ends are going to come over and join us, and then we oh, have yeah. to... Oh, what a job. Oh, wow. Thank you, Chef. The pleasure is mine. Now, this is an extra step that we do to the burn ends okay. to take them above everybody else. All right. Most people just take them right off and throw them onto the plate. We go ahead and, and we throw them into the pan and sear them hot with a rub on it to make sure we get the maximized flavor out of them. I would say that's to the max. That you? is to the max. Did a great job. All right, job now on. we need a side for this, and we're going to go over to the cooktop, and we're going to make some vegetables. All right, so the meats are in off the grill. They've been sliced, a little sauce added. Now we need a side. Chef, what are we gonna serve with it? We're just gonna do a roasted autumn squash dish with this. We're gonna start out with some acorn squash, and sweet potatoes, parsnips, yellow squash, zucchini, and then just some, some onions and nuts and a little raspberry reduction. And that'll, that'll be our side dish. That'll be our side dish. Now, have you ta taken these vegetables first and roasted them with a little olive oil, salt, pepper? I, I did. That's all exactly what all I right. did. All right, so they're ready to go. And if you were at home preparing this dish, you would do that ahead of time or maybe even the day before if that Absolutely. worked for you. All right, so from that point forward, where do we go? Well, we're going to get some heat on our pan. And we're going to start with just a drop of coconut oil. So that's an unusual oil. Why have you selected it? Good flavor? Good, good flavor, good great flavor. aroma. Just really a nice oil to use. Okay, coconut oil in a hot pot. Now we're going to start out with our yellow squash. Just a little handful in there. We'll temper our pan a little bit with that because our pan is extremely hot. Okay. So with just a drop of zucchini. Look at those pretty colors. So that's we still have some summer vegetables from the garden, and now we're getting our ball, though. So with a drop of garlic in there. Drop of garlic always works. <laughs> and now we're going to go ahead with our, our winter squashes. You know, parsnips is frequently not a favorite. However, combined with these vegetables and these seasonings, it is delicious. It is. We're going to go with a little salt and pepper. Joe tells me he didn't use steamed parsnips, and now he does because of you. Uh, oh. You were directly responsible for his health and well-being. And now, we've got those sautéing at medium okay. heat. We're going to throw in a little red onion. Okay. And this is just strictly for flavor. And then, we're just going to give it a little toss. 
Now, for those of us who don't saute the way you do, a spatula or spoon is fine. It's an option. It's an option. <laughs> Especially if you like the product in the frying pan. All right, now we on my pan. This That's is a raspberry yum. orange reduction. And we're just going to toss our vegetables in it. Would not have thought to have combined that. Um, but it looks and smells like oven. Well, Bonnie, you know I always have to try something different. You do, and that's what makes the cafe an ongoing slice of excitement of flavor. And that is our vegetable. That's our vegetable. Well, Chef, I think we need to go now to the table and plate. Absolutely. Smoker. We've sliced the meats, we've cooked the side on the cooktop, and now it's time to present it. Chefs, how do we present this for our celebrity taster? Well, the first thing we want to do is just put on a little garnish, make the plate look nice, a little something fresh, a little color. I'm just going to go something like that. And then we're going to start with our ribs, and we're just going to line them up over on this side making sure that they can see that beautiful smoke ring. And then we'll go ahead with some of this burn ends, which we have smoked and sauteed and just charred, and just beautiful. And then finally, we're gonna end with brisket over on this side. And, and again, even on the brisket, you can see that great smoke ring. And then we're gonna finish this off with our autumnal roasted vegetables with the raspberry orange glaze. And last but not least, we're gonna put on some Three Little Pigs barbecue sauce. We have the Chipotle and the Kansas City Championship sauce. And that is our plate. Chef, you've done a magnificent job. I think we need to go to the bar now and pair this with something to drink. That's my favorite part. <laughs> We have just been in the kitchen at the Cafe in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef Thomas and their barbecue chef Chris Marks. We have prepared barbecued brisket and burnt ends and ribs and we've roasted vegetables. We've got some complex flavors going on here, chef. What do you suggest we drink with this dish? Well, because we do have so many complex flavors going on, I'd like to pair it with a 2009 Gnarly Head Red Zinfandel. Now, tell me why you've selected a Zin. Well, Red Zinfandel is really a wine with complex flavors of its own, with berries and peppers and vanilla. Mm -hmm. And it's actually held in French and American oak. It's great with the complex flavors of tomato and spice. Mm. And so it's just, it's a very bossy, red wine. That's that a goes, bossy <laughs> That goes perfect with barbecue. Well, you know, the final test for your selection is that now we're going to go and present our signature dish to our celebrity taster, have him sip the wine and see what he says. I, I hope he enjoys it as much as I do. Thank you, Chef. I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, and we have just been in the kitchen at the Cafe in Briarcliff Village with their executive chef, Thomas, and one of their new chefs for barbecue, Chris Marks. We have prepared barbecue burnt ends, brisket, ribs with roasted vegetables, paired it with a red Zinfandel, and for our celebrity taster, we have invited Chancellor Leo Morton of the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Chancellor, thank you for taking time out to um, taste with us. Well, you never have to ask me twice when it's something like this. It was just one ask, that's right. That's okay. right. So please, Chancellor, if you would, now, you know, Chris Marks, the barbecue chef, is won something like nine international awards for his barbecue. I think he's got it down. I've been at this long enough. Is it okay? Just please, please. Mm. No. Delicious. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. And the sauce is 
also a creation of Chef. I will get a little bit mm -hmm. of that. One's a little spicier than the other. This is the sort of brisket that just, you don't have to chew a lot. You won't be worn out for your next meeting just by eating this. No. Well, I'm going to try this one now. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun? <laughs> if you would. Okay. A part of your task here mm -hmm. is to sip the wine and see how it pairs with the barbecue. And sometimes that's challenging with barbecue, but this is mm -hmm. a zen. Oh. And I'm going to say to your health and to love. And to yours. Also excellent. You no, know, it's a little sweet and a little spicy and I a little like dry. It that it, that's a strange combination. It, I it like is. it that way. It goes well with this. Well, Chancellor, I need to tell you while you're nibbling okay. that I am a graduate, as is the shooter of this show, from the University Great. of Missouri at Kansas Great. City. We are alumni. And those were wonderful years for me and for Kevin. I think one of the, Kevin and I were just talking about this on the way down, that as an urban university, yes. you have access to the resources of fabulous professionals in this city, and they have been generous both with their time and yes. support. Thank you for your leadership in providing a fabulous educational institution in Kansas City. Well, we are so thankful for the support we get from this community. I think you know that we just announced that we have a just a totally Please announce gift. it again. <laughs> Please oh, announce it again. The gift from Henry Block is just something that um, mm -hmm. will really send this university to another level. It's for the Block School. It's mm -hmm. to add a new building there. And uh, it, it supports the program that we have there for entrepreneurship yes. and innovation. Yes. And the new building will call be called the Henry W. Block Executive Hall for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And it's so important for this community because we have such a great heritage in entrepreneurship. We do. And this building will allow us to help generate and develop those that next generation of entrepreneurs like, uh, like Joe and Judy. Like Joe and Judy. <laughs> and they are us. exemplary entrepreneurs yes, from dog biscuits to barbecue now. Yes. You know. And by the way, let me get a little bit more I know. Well, I, I shouldn't interrupt, interrupt your dining experience mm. here. I think with our economic situation as it is, yes. being an entrepreneur is going to be more about, we have to learn new and different ways on how to earn a living and how to work in this climate. Thank you for providing an institution that is going to provide some support for that. Well, with the help we're getting from folks like Henry W. Block and all of the mentors who also help our students develop their, uh, their business plans and develop their ventures, I think this is going to have a major impact on the future of this region. And if, if we have a business person who the boomers are retiring but have such a rich history of experience, can they call Block School to Absolutely. volunteer? To Absolutely. Absolutely. We'd love to get them. And the students just love to be around entrepreneurs who've been successful Win -win. and share mm -hmm. their experiences and help these students grow. Thank you very much, Chancellor. I know you have a busy schedule. Yes. This Thank you. Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabikoff, and this week we are in the cellar with Marquis Selections. We are going to be focusing on the wines of Argentina, and with us is their managing director, Chris Cribb. Thank you for inviting us into your cellar. Hi, thanks Bonnie, great to be with you here and uh, to get a chance to talk with you about some of the wines of uh, Argentina. Argentina, okay. We traditionally haven't thought of wine from Argentina. Why did you go to Mendoza for this wine? Sure, well, when we were looking around, um, Many years ago, they started out uh, bringing grapes over from Europe mm -hmm. to South America, and when they did so, they brought over the Bordeaux varietals. So there was uh, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and all of these varietals um, were brought over to this rich, fertile land over in uh, the New World. And for a number of years, they drank all the stuff themselves. All of the wine consumed down in Argentina was 
very medium but very, very rich reds. Mm -hmm. and what we found over the last few years is um, they've got really, really old vines down there that um, have a great, um, a great depth of character. Um, actually, I took a trip down to Mendoza to, uh, to go Forced do some scouting. Forced yourself to do that, I did. did you? Okay, so what wines did you find in Argentina? What, uh, what I found is that um, the two main grapes that yes. they make down there, um, the number one red wine is called Malbec. Mm -hmm. and Malbec is, um, like I Which said... Which they're known? They are. Known for Malbec, they, okay. They're the world's largest producer of Malbec. Um, it was a French varietal that came from the uh, from the Bordeaux region. It was a minor grape there, mm -hmm. but it became uh, well known in uh, Argentina. And um, they produced that as their largest red wine. And then uh, on the white wine side, um, they do a wine called Torontis. And um, the Torontis that we brought with us here today is uh, from the Mendoza region as well. It's a little bit more of a floral, um, lighter white, kind of a little bit sweet with um, with a nice acid base to it. Okay. All right. So, what what are the flavor profiles of this wine? Sure. Well, we take a sniff there, and we kind of see that you, you get a lot of that uh, floral, citrus flavors, almost a little bit of peach in the nose, yes, you do. and um, the the idea behind the whites is to be light and refreshing on the palate. So, okay. as we take a taste, you see that it's still got a lot of acid to it. It does. It's got. I would you not know, have anticipated some, that from the nose. Bigger mid palate to it. Mm. And Torontis is um, really only grown down in Argentina, and we're really lucky that uh, the producer we work with is a 100% um, organic uh, vineyard down there. So nice. The, um, the Caligori Organic Vineyards is our producer that we're working with, and so this is the 2011, it's a very young wine. Um, it's got a lot of that bright, crisp acidity to it, and yeah, it's a value price wine. You know, when we looked at Argentina, we said, this is one of the places where the dollar really goes a long way. So you get a, a great value for your money. All right, what would we serve with this white? You know, I think that this would be a great one for a, um, for a real crisp salad with a, um, with like a buttermilk um, dressing. dressing on top of it. Maybe some, you know, some, uh, some of those non, some of the little bit fattening uh, uh, chicken fingers or something in there. Mm. Um, I think this would also be a real, uh, a real treat when you're talking about um, just a, a summer on the patio, you know, when you're... Um, it's refreshing. Very refreshing, very light. Refreshing. And okay. the, um, you know, it goes really well with uh, some, some other things that have a little bit of spice to them. Okay, so, so what temperature? We are we would do this, this? Um, just right out of the fridge, you know, a nice, we nice want it, cool. We want it really cool, in the 40s, yeah, low 40s? Low okay. 40s, um, that will uh, that'll keep it crisp and um, it'll open up as it gets a little bit warmer. What we'll find is that um, you know, you'll see more and more flavor uh, over the course of about an hour or so when it opens up. Okay, now the Malbec. Malbec. Now this is really what Argentina is known for. Ooh. And I am happy to say that this is a very award-winning Malbec. Um, this is uh, one of the top 100 wines uh, from Wine and Spirits magazine. And that was regardless, irregardless of price point, and it was it retails for about fourteen ninety nine. So great value for your money. So very affordable. Yeah, and this yeah. is um, this is old vines from Caligiori's vineyards that are over eighty years old, and they the, the wine stays on the skins for three weeks, which gives it that real deep dark color that you see there. And the kind tannins. Of, the sort of, tannins yes. can s soften up with it. Uh, this is 2009 vintage, which was a another warm year. Where Mendoza is, basically you've got the Andes Mountains that run mm -hmm. right between it and Chile. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of acts as a rain shield. So all of the, uh, the winter rains come over, turn into snow on the top of the Andes, and that's what um, makes it kind of a very dry, almost uh, desert-like on the other side. The only, uh, the only water that this gets is usually from snow melts. So. so we're talking about really pure environment and probably one of the reasons he's able to be organic because Absolutely. he's got all the resource. He's choosing to utilize all the resources to make this. This is a fresh, clean smell, too. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of dark berries here. You oh. get a lot of that. Oh, that's heaven. Almost that um, kind of cassis flavor. Mm. Uh, maybe even a little bit of mocha to it. Mm. 
that's an amazing that's an amazing red and you know it's got that longer mm -hmm. palette so mm -hmm. when you're thinking about what you're going to pair it with food wise it's got a little bit more um, ability to hang with something that's got a little fat in it, a little meat to it. You would do steak. Yeah, I think so. But you know, you could also do tomato sauce, uh, bolognese. You could. You know, you it's, could do that. It's got enough, especially with something that, that, like the bolognese, it's got a little bit of meat in it too. Um, it would uh, it would grow with it. I think this is also really lovely contrast with some dry cheeses. Cheese. You know, you know, it's. I could see cheese good. with this. <laughs> and. And, you know, if you've got a little bit left in your glass at the end of the night and you're having that chocolate dessert, you probably oh, still would, would kind of pair with this a little bit with it. Because normally we think of bubbly things as a dessert wine. Right. This could go with, this would be wonderful with chocolate. Yeah. I, what temperature are we going to serve the Malbec? We're going to serve the Malbec at uh, cellar temperature. So, you know, our 68 degrees cellar temperature. So. Please remind us when we say cellar, it's not exactly room temperature because room temperature tends to be a little warmer. Right. This is what they this is the old root cellar. The old so this cellar. is what you used to have when um, when you didn't have a refrigerator in your house. So that's um, that's usually just underground level is about 68, 70 degrees. So to achieve that, just before you serve it, put it in the refrigerator for a little bit. That's what I usually like to do. Okay. Um, the, the other very easy thing to do, um, just to put a quick chill on something. If you know you're you're going to serve it within the next 10 minutes, pop it in the freezer for five minutes. And that's but perfectly don't, fine. But don't, don't forget. It there, don't yeah. forget it's there. It okay, in there. so in the freezer for five minutes, yeah. take it out. It it's going to need to breathe. Oh, yeah, need to breathe. This mm -hmm. is a wine that. Um, over time, it will develop some sediment. It's completely unfiltered wine, so this is one of those wines that right now you don't really need to decant it. Okay. Um, but if um, if you had this in your cellar for five or six years, you it, you'd probably want to. Um, so when you store wines, do you pump the air out of it? Do I, you? I, I try to. You know, I, I've got the vacuum in. I do that in my mm -hmm. house uh, at home. Um, you know, sometimes I don't go all that way. You know, I'll just, I'll put um, a bottle like this, a red bottle, I'll cork it if I don't do the vacuum in and just put it in the fridge too. Because just getting it a little cooler helps it not age as quickly. And remembering, don't put your wine in the sunlight. Right. There don't put your wine in the don't sunlight. Do that. And don't do that. Don't just leave the cork off of it for the, the whole time. Because air and light are the enemies of wine. And so it's up to us to be the good stewards to protect the wine. And yeah. you've been a fabulous steward of wine. Tell us, how do, you, how do you go about your selection process? You've been recognized by Wine Spectator for the efforts you put in bringing wines to us here. What's the process? Well, what we've tried to do at Marquee Selections is to bring only the best of the best to, um, to our consumers. And uh, like I mentioned, going down to uh, Argentina, uh, when, when I went down to uh, Mendoza, I interviewed 50 different wineries, oh. and we settled on really one winery that we felt like had a growth potential and had wines that were unique. So, um, what we're what we're focusing on is emerging regions, this green, sustainable, organic, biodynamic focus, and wines that are great value. You know, I literally want to feel like I'm giving you a $50 wine for $25. So I that's, appreciate that, Chris. Yeah, that's, uh, it's it's okay. been nice. And you know what we found is that also reaching out to those winemakers that are into the organic movement, they're also the most educated. Yeah, they're really pushing the envelope to make sure that they're doing as much as possible to give us the best wine they can. Okay. So the green, global, sustainable, organic uh, makes a difference in what we're able to drink in our, have in our glass. I glasses. think I really do. I think that um, you know I've tasted two vineyards right next to each other that um, are uh, you know, same, the same grapes, basically same, grape? same microclimate at mm -hmm, least, mm -hmm. um, but just handled a little differently can just turn into different stuff. So huge difference. Um, well, thank so, you for the care you're taking. Sure, and I, you know, I think that when you find someone like myself, I will say I'd be a, a trusted partner in the wine business for you. Um, or if it's at your local grocer, or if it's at your local wine shop, when you find that person that knows what your palate's like and what you like. Those are the people that can really help you find the best wines. Okay. 
how can people learn more about the wines you selected? Um, website? We have a great website, uh, www.marquee.com. That's M A R Q U E E.com. Mm -hmm. is a great resource. It's got a list of all the wines that we produce, uh, including the Torontas and the, the Malbec that we had a chance to share today. The other uh, wines from our Caligiuri Organic Vineyards in Argentina, as well as 1-888-627-7833, uh, which spells out Marquee. So all you have to do is remember the word Marquee and you know how to find us. Okay, well thank you for inviting us into your cellar. Next week we are going to explore the wines of the Lake County, California. Please join us then. Sounds like a great day. Thanks a lot, Barney. <laughs> Cheers, Al. Cheers.